morning or I guess afternoon oh, that sun is so bright <laughs> I am here this morning with my tea so there's a freaking cat here in here <laughs> what the hell okay yeah so good morning <sighs> I'm gonna do a rune reading today for you guys, but also pull a few tarot cards. Hmm. It's gonna film earlier, but it was too cold to sit outside. Yep. Oh man, look at that! Look at the steam coming off of that. Can you see that? I can see it. We'll see how long I can film before I have to kick the dogs inside because they start fighting. <laughs> okay. Just loving that sun. It was overcast for most of yesterday, so didn't get a lot of sunlight. Hi, Kada. Really? No. Go, go. <laughs> God within, God without, shall I ever be in doubt? There's no place where I may go. I'm not there to see God's face, not now. And God's vision and God's ears. It's through the harvest of my years, I am the sower and the sown, God's self unfolding and God's own. Probably could have set up in a different spot to film this so that I wasn't being blinded by the sun, but hey. This is my favorite spot. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep the runes quick, so that I can get into the tarot. Sick. Okay. So first rune, we have Othala. This is the rune of inheritance, separation, but also the protected homestead, which is the, the typical inheritance. So, of course, in order to have this, you have to have property rights. Just putting that out there so this could occasionally this means that you will be receiving an inheritance um, and unfortunately that sometimes comes with someone dying um, it could also indicate a spiritual inheritance so an ancestral um, Nala and just eating, trying to eat the raspberry bush. It's frozen. <laughs> There's no raspberries. <sighs> it could be like ancestral memories um, or skills or latent abilities. Things of that nature. But it's the past position. So this is either already or currently is happening. And the second one I pulled, I still haven't taken the time to etch the rune on here, <laughs> but this is meant to represent Thursas. Thursas is Thor's hammer, Mjolnir. So the rune shape itself is a line with a triangle on it. <clears throat> Thursas represents when two seemingly polar forces come together and clash. It's brute strength. It's um, it's force. Well, this is a force that can be used for protection. Uh, it can be used. in an offensive manner. The rune could also indicate that there is um, 
potentially dangerous situations that uh, you may not be able to avoid, but you can respond appropriately and use a force like Thuris has for protection. Um, you could also, uh, it could also indicate that um, the danger in the outside world could very well come from a member of the opposite sex. And if that's the case, then there's a danger of betrayal or um, potentially, potentially, potentially violence, whether physical or emotional or spiritual. Um, but like I was saying, Thursdays can be a protective force, so try not to get blinded. <laughs> So that's the present situation. Um, so we're inheriting, inherit, 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 inheriting, inheriting something. We're inheriting something. We may need to defend it. Um, we may also need to defend against attack. Actually, what's coming to mind right now is psychic attack. Um, that sort of thing. Now, a note on the idea of psychic attack. If that is happening, it is not an excuse or a reason for someone to go into victim mode and be like, I'm going to be psychically attacked. It's an opportunity for you to um, empower yourself. Uh, and another quick note about that is the more you stay in a fear and paranoia frequency, the more you're going to spiral down and the more that those th things will happen. <sighs> the last rune is Perth, Pertho. This is uh, the rune of luck, of casting lots. Um, see. Pulling runes and divination is the same as gambling. <laughs> and the message of Perth is that, well, first of all, it's an extremely auspicious rune to have in any rune reading. Um, the other thing is that, because it pertains to good luck and fellowship and um, an opening of consciousness, uh, it also symbolizes that there's a higher perspective that you can see things from. <laughs> Someone just drove by listening to uh, Chop Suey by System of a Down. All it <laughs> okay, anyway, so higher perspective. Seek to see things from a higher perspective. Especially if you're in any kind of situation where... Uh, that Thurisaz is a more negative, um, has a more negative interpretation to it. So, like, obviously, depending on, like, where you are in life, where you are right now, your, your personal, like, vibration, um, you know, your, your spiritual hygiene, all of these things, uh, your present level of, like, physical wellness, all of these things factor into, like, how a reading will resonate for you, obviously, and like everybody's situation is unique. So take everything that I say with a, a grain of salt, but also, um, I mean, they're, they're general readings. They're general readings and that card really wanted to come out. Nice. <laughs> the general readings, so it may not apply 100%. If it does, that's pretty cool. If it doesn't, don't worry about it too much. So the card that flew out is the Queen of Cups. Absolutely lovely card. Lovely, lovely, lovely. The Queen of Cups is someone who is confident and secure in their emotions and in... Uh, and how they how they present themselves. 
so right beside her th her uh, her throne actually is a little snake that's pretty cool so also right above her cup is is that supposed to be the moon yes it is a full moon it's pretty cool actually extremely feminine symbolism Also, her cloak is mostly green, but there's some uh, some red checkers on it as well. And then this gorgeous, like, dragon knotwork pattern. Oh man, I could have set this up better. So that, this is beautiful dragon knotwork pattern. Okay, so the Queen of Cups, she's secure. She's in tune with her... Uh, with her true inner feelings. She's secure about them. She's not... Um, she's not needy or clingy or dependent. <sighs> the other thing about the Queen of Cups, and especially the water suit in general, is that these things also indicate, like, psychic, intuitive powers. So, we've been told over and over and over again that cancers are emotional, Cancers are 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 crazy because they're so emotional. <laughs> but uh, the 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 truth is that they're highly intuitive. They're highly psychic, just naturally. And um, I mean, we're told a lot of things by the official culture that is aimed at disempowering, and um, it's aimed at it's aimed. For the purpose of making you a not wake up and b discount the more mm, spiritual side of life so that's something to keep in mind <sighs> queen of cups baby i love it the, uh, the land around her is flourishing, which means she manages her kingdom well. This could also be a motherly, matronly figure. And the, the negative side of the card is sometimes, sometimes, especially if someone has not, you know, done their, done their healing work, uh, this type of figure could be um, emotionally overbearing. It's not the feeling that I get from this, but it's a possibility. Oh, you want to say hi. Okay, wow, the Princess of Pentacles. Nice. Princess of Pentacles. I like this chick. She's pretty cool. Okay, so she is super enamored by this giant pentacle she's holding. She's got bare feet. She's got this beautiful red cloak and this green checkered dress going on. And, um, She's obviously standing beside some monoliths, and uh, there's that double spiral pattern there. So, to break it down real quick, princesses in this deck represent a, a new manifestation of something. Um, this could tie directly, I mean both of these cards could tie directly into Othala there, but uh, She's contemplating it like, do I do I want do I like this? Do I want to keep going with this? Is this going to pay off in the long run? The other thing about this double spiral pattern is that it it um it indicates like how we are always going from one world into the next and then and then back again. It's the unwinding and winding up and then the reverse of life. So, this card speaks very much of newness. And, uh, yeah, it's the physical manifestation of something physical. <sighs> Whether that is a new job, a new house, or just a new place to live, or some, some physical, um, worldly thing. That's what the Princess of Pentacles is all about. 
She's very young in this card. This is a very young princess. So, if it's referring to a person, which I don't feel like it is, but if it is referring to a person, then it's um, typically someone younger, but could even be just younger in spirit, but I get the, the feeling it's more of a new idea or a new opportunity, especially with that Othala and the last card. <laughs> Ten of Wands. So we see here, let's wait for this truck to pass. Some giant spools of wire, cable. Interesting, okay, so 10 of wands. I, lo I love it, I love it, okay. <clears throat> and on the bottom here, we have the world, sweet, with the, um, the pistis, she's, they, because it's actually a hermaphroditic, hermaphrodite figure, at the end of their journey, they're standing amidst the, uh, pistis Sophia, which brings in the concepts of, um, sacred geometry and all of that, it's also a very womanly shape. <laughs> And it is above the globe of the world with the four suits around it. And they are also holding two different colored wands. And I actually want to note one is gold and one is silver. So that says to me uh, sun and moon. So it is another way of showing the, um, the unification of masculine and feminine. Um, speaking of, we are actually less than a week away from the total solar eclipse so here's the sun here's the sun here's the moon <laughs> the moon's gonna pass in front of the sun in such a way that it'll look like the moon is eating the sun um so it's pretty cool also the head of this figure is blocking the sun that's pretty cool so anyway the world is the end and the rebirth of something new. It's just pointing that out there. Okay, so back to the Ten of Wands. This figure here, we see he's got Ten of Wands on his back and he's about to climb up a hill. That, that sucks. Another name for this card is Oppression. Saturn in uh, Sagittarius. It's the last deacon of Sagittarius. <sighs> Oppression. Something that I was actually reflecting on this morning was that my, my true love for art <clears throat> and painting and creating really beautiful things didn't really explode and begin blossoming until I was uh, in the super abusive relationship that I mentioned in the last video. <clears throat> and something that has come up a few times on different uh, astrology videos that I've listened to or watched and whatnot has been that during times of pain and suffering is when we truly blossom into our potential and that's when the best art comes out it's when the best and most beautiful and heartfelt things come out of humanity it's like a measure of a measure of suffering and oppression is necessary unfortunately to to truly ignite the inner beauty so that's definitely what i see going on here <clears throat> The other thing to keep in mind is the 10 is the end of the cycle. The 10 is also the 1, right? 1 plus 0 is 1. So with these three cards here, 
you have a level of emotional maturity and um, the embracing of psychic intuitive and artful gifts the ten of wands <clears throat> and the princess of pentacles i feel like this ten of wands this uh oppressive situation this it's pretty obvious i don't need to real really like uh explain that do i this oppressive situation <clears throat> is going to bring people new opportunities it may also um spark off and and um cause a lot of people to awaken <laughs> that isn't already happened <laughs> and uh, we're gonna really start seeing more and more people embrace embrace these these types of gifts <clears throat> and uh, you could very well have an opportunity to turn it into a business um, <clears throat> or find something that maybe actually not only okay so there's two ways you could see this actually that this um situation as I like to call it <laughs> <clears throat> might cause some uh, some new ideas to come up about how you can support yourself but something else that could happen is that you could very well have already started something and found that it is oppressive and you have too many burdens um, and you may need to to lay some of them down uh, I feel like the first is true, but I mean, that's, that's just me. So <clears throat> the other thing about these 10 cards and uh, those types of cycles is that, especially with Saturn being at the end of Capricorn, is that this time is meant to teach us a level of discipline. And I don't mean like, um, I do not mean discipline from an authoritarian, uh, hyper-masculine, um, tyrannical <clears throat> father type figure or authority figure. I mean like self-discipline to get yourself up in the morning, to lovingly treat yourself how you need to be treated so that you can do the things that you need to do to get yourself to work to um, come up with new ways to support yourself uh, to find opportunities to live more in tune with nature no to create and allow small communities to flourish to network with your neighbors there's definitely a very big time of opportunity and um, I would just ask that take some time to slow down and disconnect. I, I want to note that there was no swords in that. There's a cup, there's a pentacle, there's a wand. There's no swords. So that means that <clears throat> we need to disconnect from overthinking and get into our body and get into our emotional body, our physical body and really connecting ground.
leaning over at a really uncomfortable angle to not blind myself. <laughs> oh, wow, I just realized. <laughs> the world is card number 21, and I've been seeing 1221 freaking everywhere. That's, what, that's really funny. <clears throat> yeah, I, th I feel like this winter solstice is going to be equal parts magic and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think another really important thing that really ties into what I was saying about fear and paranoia a little bit earlier is that we play a huge role in our own reality creation and the more you focus on fear the more you manifest those things that you are afraid of so Fear also lowers our immune response. It raises our cortisol levels, which destroys everything in your body. So the best, the best thing that you can do for yourself is play an active role in your own reality creation. Do your best to um, limit the amount of negative media that's coming in to you. And... Um, like I was saying, ground, get into your body, get into your emotional body. Be here now in the physical. Um, that's a big challenge. That's a huge challenge. I'm not saying it's easy. It doesn't happen overnight. It is a daily, hourly, minute by minute practice. Um... But that's where the magic happens. You're here right now. You're not here in a year from now. You're not here last year. You're here right now. <laughs> so do what you can to focus on the present moment and do what you can to improve your physical moment right now. Yeah. That's what I got for you. I definitely will be doing some tarot. I, I promise. I promise this time. I'm not saying it and then not going to do it. I'm definitely going to do some videos <clears throat> for each of the zodiac signs with tarot and maybe some runes as well. I really like how the messages end up complementing each other. It's quite beautiful. So I will be doing that for December, <clears throat> for the rest of the December, for the solstice. Um, yeah, that's what I got for you guys. I think I'm gonna go for a walk this afternoon.